Screaming at the boys, the head was a pass away with a great noise. The second Peter 3 and 10. God know he coming back. Tell a friend to repent. Oh, he going with the wind. Free smoke, free smoke. And that is thus said the Lord. I caught a murder that he wrote. Just like Noah on the boat. Matthew 34, verse 36, song down. The hour nobody knows. Like a thief in the night, when the Christ coming back here, life switching with the Father won't. That's my business when we keep it lost. That's righteousness. Yeah, 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 yeah. You gotta pass the test. My people scattered abroad, from the east to the west. Brother, how you doing? What's your name, man? McCain, how you doing, brother? Listen, uh, we're Israel united in Christ. We are teaching our people that, 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 that we are the greatest people on earth. Right. All right. Have you ever heard that before, brother? If I ask you, brothers, what is your nationality? What would you tell me? What's your race, brother? Black? Now, do you believe in the Bible? All praises to the Most High. Do you know that I cannot find the nationality of black in the Bible? So what is it that God called you, brother? Do you know? Huh? Come here. Come closer, bro. We ain't gonna hurt you. Come here. Come closer. You too, brother. Look, look right here on this sign right here, man. Now, do you see yourself on this sign anywhere? Right here is what where you, where you see yourself. Where? American black, right? So that would be Judah, correct? All right. Now, have you ever heard the 12 tribes of Israel? No. Okay. So you say that you come from, you are an American black. God calls you Judah. Right. All right. Now, let me show you something in the Bible, bro. Stay right there. Hold on. Because we want you to listen to this, man. Let me do the round of it, chapter 1 and verse 1. What's this, brother? Chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words that Moses spake unto all Israel. So Moses is speaking to the people on this side, okay? Moses is speaking to the people on this side. He's speaking to Judah, okay? Which you say you're from, all right? Now give me Deuteronomy 7, verse 6. What would Moses tell the Israelites, all right? Watch this, brother. Brother, what you say your name was again? Cain. Read. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 6. Now watch how God feels about Judah. 12 tribes of Israel. Watch how God feels about them. Read. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6. But thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. So God said that you are holy. Do you know what the word holy means? What does that mean, brother? The word holy means to be separate. You are set apart. You are different from everybody else on the face of this earth. Right. Read. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. So God chose you to be special unto him. Read. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now, does that sound like equality to you, brother? God said that we are people that are supposed to be above everybody on the face of the earth. But look around you, brother. Are we above everybody right now? No. We are on the what? The bottom. Of right. The we're on the bottom. Give me three holy children, bro. Give me three holy children. So God said that we're supposed to be above everybody on the face of the earth. But what happened to us as a people? You're going to hold it. We're coming right back to it. <clears throat> Give me three holy children. I think it's verse uh, 13 and 14. Hold what you got, brother. Hold on. I want you to hear this. What happened to us as a people? You see what I'm saying? How is it that God said that we're supposed to be above everybody? But guess what? When you look around at the conditions of our people, we are beneath everybody. Beneath every nation on the face of the earth right now. Three holy children. Come on back. Three holy children. Alright. Verse uh, 14. Three holy children. Verse 14. For we, O Lord, are become less than any nation. For we, O Lord, the so called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics, have become less than any nation. Read it from the top again. For we, O oh Lord, are become less than any nation, uh -huh. and be kept under this day in all the world because of our sins. Why? Because of our sins. We are kept under. We are beneath everybody because of our sins. And that's what we're out here teaching our people that you must repent. You got to come out of your sins. All right? That's what we're out here teaching our people. Go back. Deuteronomy. 
Book of Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7. This is verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Give me Deuteronomy 28 and verse 1. Great so analysis. understand something. You are supposed to be above everybody. You are chosen by God. Right. You are the child of the Most High God. That's right. There's no reason for us to be living on the bottom. But we're living on the bottom because of our sin. Thus saith the Lord. That's right. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 1. And it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So if we listen to God, what will God do? Read. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command thee this day. Read. That the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. So that's the condition. Okay, that's, that's, that's the condition that we have. We have to keep God's commandments. We got to obey the voice of the Lord thy God to be set above everybody. Right. Okay, read on. Verse 2. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee, if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. A lot of our people walk around saying that they're blessed today. But God said the only way he's going to bless us as a nation of people is if we keep his commandments, if we listen to them. Give me verse 15. So what's the flip side of that? Remember, we're on the bottom because we broke the commandments of God. And we continue to break them to this very day. Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 15. Read it out. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. And all these curses, and all these what? All these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So God said if we don't listen to him, if we don't keep his commandments, he's going to put curses on the so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics. That's this right. is why we are on the bottom of society today. Bring it out. Read on. so-called blacks, Native Americans, and Hispanics are in, as a nation of people, we are cursed in this city because we are on the bottom in that city. That's right. And cursed shall thou be in the field. And cursed shall thou be in the field. Come here, brother. I want you to look at something real quick. I want you to look at something real quick. You see this right here? Who are these people right here on the side? That's in the, that's in the cotton field. Just picking cotton here. That's our people, right? Why did this happen to us, brother? Why did this happen to us? Why is it that we were we were in cotton fields with no pay, brought over here on slave ships, and taken captive and made to serve like this right here? Why? Why did that happen to our people? Because we broke God's commandments. Yeah, right. That's, that's why it right. To our people, and it didn't happen to anybody else. Did the white man brought that big cotton. What about the uh, Arab man, the African, the real Africans? No, the Chinese or the Japanese. Did they pick cotton? Did they pick the tobacco, or the sugar cane? No. Was meat beat out of their backs? No. Were they hung by their necks? No. But this happened to our people. Were they sold on auction blocks? No, but it happened to our people, and the Bible prophesied. That's right. And that's what we're reading right now, bro. So I want you to pay close attention so you can get this, okay? Pay close attention, brother, because you love God, right? You say you love God and you believe in the Bible, right? So watch what God is telling us what's going to happen. Read it again. Verse 16. Curse shall not be in the city, and curse shall not be in the field. That's a curse to be out in the cotton field in the hot sun. Picking cotton. Is that not a curse? Right. All right. Give me verse uh, 32. You know. Verse 32. Watch this. Brother. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Remember, Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. Okay? Moses is speaking to the children of Israel. And he said, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. When did that happen? 
What people were giving unto another people? Did that happen to our ancestors? It did, didn't it, bro? So our ancestors were given to another people. Read. And their eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And when our children were taken away from us, we looked and we missed them. The word longing means to miss. Right. So you missed your children because they just took the kids. They sold the child of one plantation and the mother and the father were sold to other plantations. Right. So we were separated as a family. All right, read on. And there shall be no might in thine hand. And what can we do about it when they took our children? When they took our children from us and sold them to another plantation, and you are enslaved by a slave master, what could you do about it? Nothing. You're absolutely right. The brother just shook his head. Nothing. We couldn't do nothing about it, right? Right. Because there was no might in your hand. You had no economic might. You couldn't pay to get your children back. You had no military might. You, couldn't, you didn't have an army standing up fighting for you. Bring out. All right, read. And thou, read it, look for. And and there, there shall be no might. And there shall be no might in thine hand. So it was nothing that we could do to get our children back. Give me verse thirty-seven, bro. Bring it I'm out. I'll show you why you came up and you said that you are uh, black. All right, because that term as a nation of people, we can't find it in the Bible, right? No. We can't find that in the Bible. All right? Read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. No. And thou shalt become an astonishment, uh -huh. a proverb, and a byword uh -huh. among all nations, whether the Lord shall leave thee. So God said that we're going to become an astonishment. It's a great wonder to see our people in the state that we are in. It's a great surprise. Look at this. Look at the conditions that our people live in. All right? We live in low income housing. We live one on top of, of one another in the projects. All right? That's how we live in the day. <laughs> the same way they packed us in those slave ships like Saudis, they got us living in the same type of conditions today. Bring it That's out. Right. We live in the same way today in the projects. See, chop. Read it, read it from the top again. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. Read. And thou shalt become an astonishment, uh -huh. a proverb, uh -huh. and a byword. God said that you're going to become a byword. You know what that means, brother? You're going to be known as other names, names outside of what God called you. Right. Black is a name that hey, a white man called our people. Right. That's where we got that name from. God never called like you a black is. man. God uh, called you Judah. So right. You understand this? God called you Judah. Read it. Among all the nations where the Lord shall lead okay, thee. So wherever we're at, we've lost our identity. We don't know who we are. That's why you came up and said that you're black. Okay? But that's not what God called you. You have lost your name without slavery. All right? Hold what you got. Give me Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1 and verse 2. Bring it out! Go. Nor his owner. So God is comparing someone to an ox, a dumb animal. The ox is a dumb animal. You can't think like me. Agree? And the ass is master's crib. So an ox knows who his owner is. The ox knows who he belongs to. Alright? And the donkey knows his homeland. Right? That's where he lives. Agree? But Israel. But who? But Israel. But Israel. The people on this side right here, what? Does not know. We don't know who we are. We don't know where we come from and who we belong to. We don't know that God is our God. He's not the God of everybody. We've never known that. Read on. Now, people do not consider. And neither do we even consider that we are God's chosen people, that we belong to the Most High God. Right. Neither do we consider for one second. We think that we're niggas. We think that we're Negroes. We think that we're Black or African American. We think everything outside of what God called us. All right, go back. Chapter 30, uh, 28, verse 37. Verse 46. They shall be upon thee for a sign. And these curses are going to be upon God's people for a sign. And for a wonder. And for a wonder. And upon thy seed forever. And upon your seed forever. Till Christ cracked that sky, curses are going to be upon our people. 
because of our disobedience unto the Lord thy God. Right. Read. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. For the abundance of all things. Because we didn't want to go to God and get what we needed. God said he's going to do what? Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send against thee. God says since you don't want to do what I want you to do and you don't want what I have for you, I'm going to have you to serve your enemies. Yes. Read it from the top. Verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thy enemies which the Lord shall send against thee. Who brought the enemies against us, brother? Who brought the enemies against us, brother? The Lord did. The Lord said that he's going to bring enemies against us. And we're going to have to serve them. So he's going to describe who your enemies are. Whoever you're doing this right here for, whoever you're serving in this manner right here, God calls them your enemies. Watch this. Read. In hunger. In what? In hunger. Who do you have to go to for food, brother? You got to go to the grocery store and get food, right? Bring it out, huh? Who own those grocery stores? What nation of people? <laughs> American people. What color are the American people? Bring it out. White. White man. Right? Hey, that's who you right, gotta right. go and get your food from. Right. Because that's who own the Walmarts. That's who own the grocery stores. Right. The right. And things of that nature, right? Our people don't own them. So you gotta go to these people when you want something to eat. Bring it out. The same people that tie ropes around your neck and hung you from trees. You got to go right back to them and ask them for food. And when we were enslaved by them, your slave master had to provide the food for you then. We're still doing it today in 2019. Read. And in thirst. What? And in thirst. Just like the food, you got to go get your water from them. Same thing. Just like back then, you're still doing it today. Right. Because you are still, you are still captive here in this land. Read. And in nakedness. And in nakedness. The clothes on your back. We don't make any of these clothes that's on our backs. We don't own no textile companies. We don't own any cotton or any material. Right. Guess what? You have to go to your enemies for that also. Right. Read. And in want of all things. So in want of all things, who do you think came up with this bus system? So for transportation, you got to go to who? Hey. The so-called white man. Hey. Once that's again. Right. The same joker that enslaved our people. You got to go back to this man for everything. All right? Read. Read that part again. And then one of all things. So if you want a birth certificate, a driver's license, if you want a loan, you got to go to their banks. You want education, you got to go to their school system. Right. Now, you right. want to know about God, guess what? The white man taught you about God. That's who right. taught you this image right here. Right. Who is this man right here, bro? Bring it out. Who is this? You said who? That's Jesus. Why do our people think that that's Jesus? Give me Matthew 24, bro. Bring it out. Drop that. Give me Matthew 24. We're going to deal with this right now. Because that's not Jesus according to the Bible. Right. That's who they showed you on the television screens. That's who they showed you on books as being Jesus. Right. But that's not Jesus Christ according to the Bible. That's not the Son of God according to the Bible. That's right. Matthew 24 and verse uh, 14. Uh, verse 24. The book of Matthew chapter 24, verse, 20, verse 24. For there shall arise false Christ. For there shall arise what? False Christ. And that's what you see right here. A false Christ that arise. Yeah. And false prophets. And shall show great signs and wonders. So anybody that's teaching that this is Jesus Christ, that's a false prophet. That's, that's right. That's right. in the Bible. Right. Read it from the top. Look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 24. For now shall arise false Christ and false prophets and, show, and shall show great signs and wonders. That's what your Christian church does. They show great signs and wonders. Which is, I just seen on the internet where you had a joker acting like he rose somebody from the dead. They're showing great signs and wonders, but it's all lies. They are false prophets because they believe in this image right here, which is a lie. Read. And so much that if it was possible, they shall deceive the very elect. And that's what has happened. They have deceived the elect. They have deceived the elect. Who is God's elect? Hold that. We're coming right back to it. Give me God's elect. They have deceived our people. They have deceived the people on this side. Come here, sister. Come here. 
You came up in the right time, see? We talking about something real good. Huh? Come around here. Come around, that's fine. You ain't gonna be on there if you come around here. You ain't gonna be on there if you come around here. I want you to see this. That's why I just want you to see that. Tell me who this is right here. Who is that? In today's sense, I think it's Jesus, right? You, you say it's Jesus, right? Just like that brother right there. That's what we think. Why do we think that this is Jesus Christ? Is that image in the Bible? It's in some Bibles. I haven't read one yet, sis. That, right. says, Jesus, that says Jesus was a pale-faced white man with blue eyes and stringy hair. I haven't no. seen it, sis. Right. I have not seen that. And what we are here to do is deliver the truth to our people. Right. Because this image right here has destroyed our people. Right. This is why our communities look like they look. Because guess what? We believe that this is Jesus Christ. All praise, all praise. We believe that that is Jesus Christ. All right? What you got? 2 Corinthians 11. All right? I want you to hear this, sis. This is very important, okay? This is about your salvation. All right? I want you to hear something. Give me, uh, before you go there, give me John. Give me John. Hold that. Hold that. We're coming right back to it. All right? We're coming right back to it. Give me John 7, verse 35. 38. Book of John, chapter 7, verse 38. Bring it up. believeth on me, as the scripture has said. Christ said, he that believeth on him, as the scripture says, Bring it out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Out of his belly shall flow understanding. Right. You, understand right. this. you have to believe on Christ as the Bible says. Yes, you understand right. this? Yes, right. Christ is nowhere in the Bible that Christ was a white man. Okay? So watch this. Now go, now go there. So we have to believe on Christ as the scripture has said. Read. Book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 4. Paul warned us about this man right here. Watch this, sister. Paul warned us about it. For if he that cometh and preaches another Jesus. So somebody's going to come to you and preach another Jesus. They down. preach this white boy right here. No. You understand this? That has destroyed our people. Jesus. Our people right. think that this is the son of God. The greatest man that ever walked the earth is a white man. And that's why we look up to these people today. Right. But the greatest man that ever walked the, walked the earth looked just like us. That's right. right. He looked just like us. Read. For well, if he that come preach another Jesus who we have not preached. Man, the disciples, the prophets never preached a white Christ. They never preached a Jesus Christ with stringy hair. Right. right. Read. Or if ye receive another spirit when ye have not received or another gospel when ye have not accepted. See, what comes along with this teaching right here, with this image right here, is another spirit and another gospel. Right. Now you believe that God loves everybody. I bet you believe that, don't you see? You see that? That's because of this image. Right. The Bible doesn't say that. The Bible doesn't say that. We're going to give you thus saith the Lord, sister. Hey, right. We're not going to give you our own words, and we're not going to give you a motivational speech like the pastors do. We're not going to give you a theory like they do. That's why they go to theologian school. Right. They give you a theory on God. Right. You understand? Right. But we're going to give you the truth. Thus saith the Lord. We're going to come straight out of the scriptures and right. get to you wrong. You understand this? Read. He might well bear with him. So the Bible says if you if you accept this image, you might as well bear with that thing. Now, we're going to get the true description of Jesus Christ in the Bible, okay? And you tell me if this is Christ or if this is a description of Christ. Watch this, sister. Bring it up. Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation of Jesus Christ. What does the word revelation mean, sister? Do you know? It means to reveal. That's okay. It means to reveal. The word revelation means to reveal. So this is the revelation of who? The revelation of Jesus Christ. So this is the revealing of Jesus Christ. Okay? Let's see how the Bible reveals Jesus to us. Alright? What's this? Which God gave unto him to show unto his servant. So God gave this revelation to the to the prophet to John to show to his servants, which you are. You are a servant of the Most High God because you are the twin, you are the children of Israel, sister. Right. You are God's chosen people. Right. You understand this? So you are the servant of God. So this is why this information is coming to you. Read. 
to show unto his servants things which must surely come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Read verse 3. Verse 3. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the word of this prophecy. Blessed is he that readeth what we about to read, and blessed is he that hear it. So listen up, sister. You understand? Read. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. So you need to keep these things that you're about to hear that's written in this book. Give me verse 14 now. Now it's about to reveal to you Jesus Christ what he looked like. Read. Right, book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 14. Yeah. His head and his hair were white like wool. Who got white woolly hair, sister? Which one of these pictures got white woolly hair? Okay, what, what people on earth today have woolly hair? They call it nappy. You understand this? But God calls it beautiful. Because right. the sun had hair like you and I. Right. You understand this? That's right. Read. As white as snow. He was white as snow because Christ was full of wisdom at this time. Read. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. So Christ had red eyes because he drank wine in moderation. He wasn't a drunk. But anytime you drink wine in moderation, the whites of your eyes start to turn a little red. You understand this, right? Read. And his feet like unto fine brass. And if they burn in a furnace. Read that part again. And his feet like unto fine brass. What color is brass, sister? What color is brass? Brass is like the rhythm of a brown, isn't it? Okay? So, that X this man out already. He ain't no color brown. Right. Right? But watch how brown this was. Read. As if they burn in a furnace. As if it burned in a furnace. So if you burn anything, what color does it become? Black, Exactly right. So was Jesus Christ this man right here? Not according to this Bible. Remember, we read, he that believeth on me as the scripture has said. You understand this, sister? Don't receive this other Jesus that was taught to our people. Go back to Matthew 24. Go back to Matthew 24. I want you to understand Christ, not only did Paul warn us about the coming of another Jesus being preached, but Christ warned us about it. That's All right? right? Matthew 24 and verse 4 first. Bring it up. Read. Book of Matthew chapter 24, verse 4. Bring it up. And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. What man gave you this image? Bring it up. You understand this? This came from a man by the name of Leonardo da Vinci. He painted this image to a man called Caesar Borgia. You understand this? This image was painted in the 1500s, sister. Now I want you to take a close look at this image that's painted in 1912 AD, before 1500. It's a black image of Christ. It was always understood that Christ was a black man, was a dark-skinned man according to the Bible. Right. But during the Renaissance period, they changed the image. Man changed the image. That's why Christ said, what again? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you, sister. We're not going to allow it to happen anymore to our people. That's why we are here to give you the truth. Because we don't want to see our people deceived anymore. Read. For many shall come in my name. For many shall come what? In my name. Who did this dude come saying he was? Did you just hear what the Bible just said? Read it again. For many shall come in my name. God, Christ said, listen, don't let no man deceive you. Many is going to come in my name. What did he come saying he was? Christ. What the television tell you he was? Christ. Right. All right, read. Say it. I am Christ. And shall deceive many. And it's going to deceive many. You have been deceived, sister. But right. it's time for you to come out of the deception. Right. You understand this? It's time for you to come out of the deception. Give me Isaiah 29 and verse 13. Bring it up. I want to hear my blood here, but y'all speaking truth. This is how you became deceived, sister. Just go as you as you walk. I want you to listen to this. This is how you became deceived, sister. Read. Book of Isaiah, chapter 29, verse 13. Bring it up. Before the Lord said, For as much as this people, verse 10. For the Lord hath poured out upon you a spirit of deep sleep. This is when you became deceived. You've been asleep. It's time to wake up. Anytime, anytime. Hey, it's okay, sister. It's okay. The camera is here for our protection, okay? Mainly. All right, but listen, I want you to understand something, sis. Listen. 
we have been deceived into thinking that this is Jesus Christ, and it has destroyed the minds of our people. Right. It has destroyed our communities. Right. It has destroyed our homes. Right. That's why the black man is not in the home because he don't think he's great. Right. He think the greatest man to walk the earth was a white man. Right. You understand this? But it was us, sister. Yes. Right. It was us. Jesus Christ looked just like your brother. Yes. You understand this? Read, read for thirteen. Verse 13, well, for the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth. And that's what we do. We draw near God with our mouths. You understand this? We go into church and we say, I love the Lord. We want to praise God. We stomp our feet and we clap our hands, right? Watch this. And what their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. But we have removed our minds far from God. Our minds have been, that's okay, sis. Hey, another bus gonna come through, it's all good. Hey, this is the best thing for you to hear right now anyway, sis. Cause you ain't supposed to be spending no money today. Today is the Lord's Sabbath day, sis. You out here with the prophets of the Most High God. You understand this? You, listen, let me tell you something. You just heard the greatest information of your life, sis. And you worried about a bus? Daniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.